Good afternoon and welcome to today's Finance Committee meeting. My name is Julissa Ferreras Copeland. I'm the chair of the committee. I want to begin by welcoming my colleagues that have joined us this afternoon. Council members Cumbo, Mario, Rodriguez, Miller, Cornegie, Levine, and Majority Leader Van Bramer. Today, the Finance Committee will take the necessary actions to allow the City Council to adopt the fiscal 2018's budget which totals approximately $85.2 billion. The committee will vote on 18 budget-related items along with three land use items. Before we begin, there are many people to thank who helped take us to today's budget adoption, so please be patient. Today is bittersweet day for me, as this will be my final budget as a member of the Council. The opportunity to serve my district here has been a true privilege. My experience was only, has only been enhanced by the remarkable individuals that I've been able to work alongside these past few years. First and foremost, our speaker, shh, our speaker, Melissa Marviverito, the speaker has been a tireless advocate for the people of the city and a fearless leader for the members of this council. Throughout the past four budget cycles, she has listened to the concerns and priorities of each of us and our constituents and has approached budget negotiations with clear purpose of ensuring that the council's vision for this city is reflected in each budget. Because of her leadership, more young people than ever before can get summer and year-round jobs. More immigrants have access to education, health, and legal services. More police officers keep our city safe. And more students have access to affordable, healthy school meals. This year's budget delivers even more victories for New Yorkers, and I believe the Speaker can be proud of what she has delivered in her final budget. I also want to thank the Speaker's Chief of Staff, Ramon Martinez, for all of his work on behalf of this institution and for all of us as members. Thank you to my fellow Finance Committee members for their partnership over the last three years and a half. They are the Majority Leader Van Bramer, Minority Leader Steve Matteo, the Council Members uh, uh, Corey Johnson, Helen Rosenthal, I. Denique Miller, Lori Cumbo, Mark Levine, Robert Cornegie, Vanessa, Vanessa Gibson, and Irani Rodriguez. This year, the committee heard nearly 100 hours of testimony from agency heads about their operations and goals for the upcoming fiscal year and question each of them thoroughly. We also heard the vital testimony of our public. Throughout this process, we shared the information we obtained from these hearings with our colleagues, which helped inform the creation of a bud uh, budget that reflects the Council's priorities. Thanks to each of you for being my partner throughout these past four budgets, and I will miss working with each and every one of you. And of course, I must express my enormous gratitude to our dedicated and talented finance staff. This begins with Latanya McKinney, our amazing finance director. One of the things that I'm most proud of about my tenure as finance chair is that for the first time, the council was represented by three women in the city's budget process and negotiations. Latanya, you have been a fantastic leader, negotiator, advocate, friend, and just a fierce woman overall. Thank you. All, all 51 of us know that none of the budget success, successes we have achieved would have been possible without the committed effort that you and your staff have put. It has been a pleasure working with you. I also want to thank the staff at the Finance Division individually. Each of you has played an essential role in bringing us to today's adoption. And I thank you for the long hours you have worked on this budget, responding to council members' requests, the many, many council member requests and questions and guiding the delegations in BNT or, um, and our wonderful finance division is Deputy Director and Chief Economist Dr. Ray Majeski, Deputy Director Regina Parita Ryan, Deputy Director Nathan Toth, Deputy Director Paul Simone, Assistant Director Emra Ediv, Finance Council Eric Bernstein, Supervising Economist Paul Strum, the Finance Unit Heads Isha Wright, Chima Obicheri, John Russell, Dohina Sampura, and Krillian Francisco, and the Finance Analyst and Economist in Alphabetical Order. That's what it says, that's why I said that. Uh, <laughs> Jessica Ackerman, Alia Ali, Maria Inache, Sarah Gastonum, Kenny Grace, Zachary Harris, Elizabeth Hoffman, Sheila Johnson, uh, William, 
K. Karamating, Jin Lee, Prince Mensa, Jeanette Merrill, Namira Nazut, Nazat, uh, Kathleen O'Hagan, Jimmy Reyes, Steve Reister, John Seltzer, Kendall Steffen, Brandon West, and Davis Winslow. I'd also like to thank the finance support staff, Nicole Anderson, Robert Caturano, and Maria Pagan. And last but not least, my incredible team, my chief of staff, Catalina Cruz, my deputy chief of staff, Ivan Acosta, Shayana Guayo, Lillian Cepeda, and everyone at the district office who has helped keep things running smoothly throughout this process. With thanks to all of you, let's move on to adopting the budget. The fiscal 2018 budget is the culmination of several months of hearings, negotiation, and advocacy from New Yorkers across the five boroughs. It reflects the Council's vision for a budget that strengthens our community and plans responsibility for changes that may, be, that may lie ahead. These wins will benefit the people of the city through the programs and services we fought to include along with additional long-term budget stabilization measures that allow New Yorkers to be confident that the city is prepared in the event of economic downturn. This year we entered budget negotiations aware that the new political climate in Washington threatens many of the program services and freedoms that New Yorkers hold dear. The Council was determined that the final budget would demonstrate our support for our city's diverse communities, invest in the most vulnerable among us, and budget prudently for, uh, to guard against economic risk. I feel strongly that we have negotiated a budget that accomplished these goals and incorporates many of the Council's signature priorities for the coming fiscal year. I want to highlight a few items in particular. First, the Council has repeatedly made youth jobs a top priority, believing that our city's young people can grow to their maximum potential. I mean, they could become finance chairs if you are an SYEP participant. Um, if given right, the right opportunity. The fiscal 2018 budget continues our unprecedented investment in youth jobs by adding an additional $9 million to provide a record 70,000 summer jobs, uh, along with $20 million to provide an additional 6,500 year-round job. The budget also includes, includes $16 million for Compass programs, supporting after-school youth programming. In addition, this budget includes, among other priorities, $12.5 million to expand the Universal Lunch Program and provide breakfast in the classrooms for all elementary school students, an expansion to the veterans tax exemption that will provide hundreds of dollars in saving per veteran on their tax bills, $28.8 89 million baseline funding for senior services, 17.6 million for indirect contract rate increases for our human services providers, among 12.7 million for model contracts in ACS, runaway homeless youth, and adult protective services. 110 million in increased capital funding for libraries, and 7.2 million to expand the emergency food assistance program, and 4 million to provide a second pair of boots to our brave firefighters who keep us safe, safe each and every day. Furthermore, we have boosted many council investments in essential programs and services, including immigrant services with 10 million. Um, I'm going to give you guys the biggest gift. I'm going to skip a couple pages, because why not? I'm the finance chair. Um, we're going to move on. Yes, I'm sure you want to hear all of it. With that said, <laughs> I will turn now to the items that the Finance Committee will vote on that will actually make these accomplishments a reality. I'm going to be reading all of this again on the floor. So I just want to take this opportunity for us to really acknowledge the amazing finance team. So please, let's give them a very, very big round of applause. <laughs> finance committee members should have a budget packet that contains all budget-related legislation that must be voted on by the committee and again by the full council at the stated meeting. The packet also includes supporting schedules that are not voted on but filed with the committee as well as other non-budget related items that are being voted on today. I want to strongly emphasize that the Finance Committee members will be given only one budget packet, so please do not distribute. After you vote on the packet items, you must bring your packet and all of its contents to the stated meeting to vote it out again. 
Council members who are not on the Finance Committee will be given their budget packets at the stated meeting. Our committee council emailed the description of all the items to you, so I will simply list the items that are on the agenda today that require a vote. First item is Reso A, Capital Budget. Second item is Reso B, Capital Budget, which is the capital budget as amended by Reso A. The third item is the resolution adopting the contract budget. The fourth item is the resolution, well, there's only 85 items, y'all. Um, the fourth item is the resolution adopting the expense and the revenue budgets. The fifth item is the resolution to improve the amendment to the five-year education capital plan. The sixth item is the 10-year capital budget strategy. The seventh item is the resolution approving the 44th year of a community development program and the 43rd year reallocations. The Eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth item is a partridge in a pear tree. Um, our items resolutions approving the discount rate, interest rates, and non payment of the property taxes and the interest rates for non payments of water and sewer rents. The 13th, 14th, and 5th items are the three property tax resolutions. The 16th item is the resolution approving an expense budget modification. The 17th item is the resolution approving a revenue budget modification. The 18th item is a transparency resolution. And the 19th through 21st items are the land use items and other documents in your package which are not required separate votes are. A list of the terms and conditions adopted by fiscal 2018 Schedule C, and Borough President's proposed changes. As a reminder to members, Schedule C is a schedule of the expense, revenue, and contract budget, and the appropriations for the organizations listed in Schedule C are in the expense, revenue, and contract budget. We do not vote on Schedule C separately. Council members will have to sign a disclosure form indicating whether a conflict exists with any of the groups listed in Schedule C or Reso A. If any council member has a potential conflict of interest with any of the organizations included here, she has the opportunity to disclose the conflict at the time of their vote. If you have not yet signed those disclosure forms, staff from the general counsel's office are here in the committee room next door in the committee room to guide you through the process. So please uh, see one of them before you vote. As a further reminder, please disclose any conflict you may have with the proposed subcontractors used by any organization sponsored. These disclosures must be made before the subcontractor can be approved. As I mentioned, the staff from the general counsel's office is here if you have any questions. In addition to the budget, we will also be voting today on a transparency resolution that sets forth the new designation and changes in designation of certain organizations receiving local aging and youth discretionary funding and funding pursuant to certain initiatives in the budget. Organizations appearing in the resolutions that have not yet completed the pre-qualification process conducted by the Mayor's Office of Contracts, the Council, or any other entity are identified in the attached chart with an asterisk. As with all transparency resolutions, council members will have to sign a disclosure form indicating whether or not a conflict exists with any of the groups on the attached list. If any council member has a potential conflict of interest with any of the organizations listed, he or she has the opportunity to disclose the conflict at the time of their vote. As a reminder, please disclose any conflict you may have with proposed subcontractors used by organizations sponsored by discretionary funding. These disclosures must be made before the subcontractor can be approved. Rohan from the General Counsel's Office is here and other members of the General Counsel. Finally, the committee will be voting on three land use items. The first resolution would provide a partial 40-year Article 11 tax exemption to support the construction of 45 units of low-income rental housing in Speaker Mark Viverito's district in the Bronx. The Speaker has expressed support of this resolution. The second item concerns uh, the 140-26 Franklin Avenue apartment located in Council Member Coos District in Queens. This resolution would provide a partial 40-year Article 11 tax exemption for the preservation of 54 units of housing for middle-income families. Council Member Coos supports this resolution. And the final resolution would provide a partial 40-year Article Five tax exemption for Sutter Gardens Apartments in Council Member Barron's district in Brooklyn. This exemption would preserve 259 units of low income rental housing. Council Member Barron also supports this resolution. Before we go to a vote, do any members have any questions on these or any other items? That was a short version. I skipped a couple pages. Um, 
I will now ask Billy Martin, committee clerk, to call the roll. Billy Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on finance. All items are coupled. Chair Ferreris Copeland. And humbly and for the last time, I vote aye. Rodriguez. Hey. I, and for disclosure, I would like to say that my child is associated to the Association of Dominican Classical Artists as a participant of one of the, the program, and also she's at the swimming team of Astro Green, and those two institutions being funded by the council. Ben Bramer. Yeah. Um, I proudly vote aye, uh, and I would like to uh, thank and acknowledge the finance chair for uh, her amazing work and also our uh, long friendship. Uh, she has been an amazing chair uh, uh, to libraries and culturals that are reflected in this incredibly robust budget for, for libraries in our cultural sector. Uh, so I proudly vote aye, and I'll talk more about the successes in the budget later. Uh, but I, too, am disclosing on the record of the council proceedings that breaking ground is funded in the budget we are adopting, and my sister, Dawn Van Bramer, is associated with this entity. And my sister, Dawn Van Bramer, is also getting married on Sunday, so we're very, very uh, happy for her. So with that, I vote aye. Gibson. Permission to briefly explain my vote? So I'm voting aye on all, um, and I just want to just thank you, Jalissa, for being an incredible and amazing chair. Um, we are sad to see you go, but it has been an honor serving with you on this committee. Um, I always try to get here on time at 10 o'clock, and I know we tried to start on time, but I really do appreciate um, this has been a great team, and I'm um, Proud of all the work we've done under the leadership of our speaker and you and Latanya, um, the trio of dynamic women. Thank you so much for everything and to the entire finance team. I particularly want to highlight my former budget director who's now joined the finance division, Caitlin O'Hagan, for finishing your first budget. Congratulations. And I also want to thank my new budget director for completing her first budget, Wendy Gallego. So onward and upward, my continued blessings to you and your family. And thank you for always being a woman of dignity, style, and grace, and completely compassionate for not just your district, but for all New Yorkers. So God bless you. Que Dios te bendiga. And I vote I don't know. Cornegie. Mission explain my vote. I uh, probably vote I on all and would like to just say briefly, um, it's been a pleasure working with you. And I have a, a feeling that we'll continue to work together in some capacity, somewhere, somehow. Um, uh, uh, I'm gonna miss you for real. Combo. Permission to explain my vote? First, I am disclosing on the record that the New York City Department of Education is funded in the budget we are adopting, and my sisters are employed as teachers with the Department of Education. I proudly vote aye, and I just want to say as chair of the Women's Issues Committee, you have done a phenomenal job. And Chair Ferreris Copeland, a whole new generation of young ladies are going to grow up and know what they can be now because you have set the example. And our young people can't be what they cannot see. And because of you, they can see so much further. So thank you so much for your service. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for your strength, for your dedication. And I want to thank our speaker, Melissa Mark Viverito. I want to thank Latanya McKinney. You all are rock stars. You've changed the game totally in political worlds, and everyone around the world is going to know um, how dynamic you are and the phenomenal changes you've made here in New York City, and because we are the leaders throughout the world. Thank you. Levine. Permission to briefly exchange, uh, explain my vote? I will be voting aye on all. First, let me read uh, the following disclosure, which is that um, Columbia Secondary School is funded in the budget we are adopting, and my child is a student at this school. And Friends of New York County Courts is funded in the budget we are adopting, and I am a voluntary council representative with this organization. Um, Madam Chair, first let me remind you, you have six more months to preside over this committee. So that was not your last time voting aye on one of... 
on, on the budget. That is true. But we'll be modifying uh, for months to come. So if there's... If there <laughs> so we, we, can, we can take some solace in knowing that uh, we get to enjoy your leadership for many more months. Um, your departure really leaves uh, a gaping void in this body uh, that will not be easily or soon filled. Um, I, I am full of admiration for the way you are leaving on your own terms. Um, you've struggled with issues that every person in politics has, and you've had the courage to make a difficult decision uh, that has, I think, caused a lot of us uh, to look inward, and I admire you for it. Um, and you will continue to be a great inspiration for me and many others. Thank you. Miller. Mission to explain my vote? Yes. Yes? Thank you. I just want to say that it has been an absolute pleasure and honor working with you over the uh, past four years when this committee learned so much from you. Your leadership has been absolutely phenomenal. We did have the opportunity to work in other capacities prior to the council, um, and, and, and we saw then what you would become today, and you certainly all those things have come to fruition, and because of that, our city is much better off. So um, I just want to add my sentiments that all that have been said about you and your leadership here that um, it's been an absolute pleasure working with you. And with that, I will be voting aye on all except for uh, the tax rates on which I'll be abstaining. Thank you. Rosenthal. I vote aye on all with deep admiration. And I want you to know that <laughs> you are a role model, of course, for women everywhere. And I want you to know that um, my 20-year-old, 21-year-old daughter gave me grief for not spending more time with her after she heard what you were doing. <laughs> and um, it's really, no, it's really, you're an impressive, very impressive leader, Julissa. Thank you for everything you do for all New Yorkers. Matteo. Thank you. I'm going to start off with a few uh, no's that I'm sure no one's surprised that. Uh, no, not true. You have to have the minority of the Republican on the committee, <laughs> except the vets. Uh, 6257, 6258, 6273, 6274. I'll be voting no on. I'll be voting aye. And the rest, uh, some disclosures. Uh, my three children that attend school attend IS-51, Susan Wagner, PS30. Um, we are funding them. Lumen Arts and Susan Wagner we are funding. My brother works at Rum Richmond University Medical Center, which we are funding. Um, Jalissa uh, has, uh, became minority leader two years ago, and we had a chance to work daily. And during these budget process, we've become extremely close friends. Uh, you have been an extremely effective council member. You were an extreme effective staffer before that. Uh, this council is going to miss you. Uh, you're going to leave a void in the Finance Committee, but more importantly, I'm going to miss you as a dear friend, and I wish you and your family nothing but the best. All items on today's Committee on Finance agenda have been adopted by a vote of 10 in the affirmative, 0 in the negative, and no abstentions, with the exception of T numbers 625 and 6258 have been adopted by a vote of seven in the affirmative, one in the negative, and no abstentions. And the two tax fixing resolutions have been adopted by a vote of eight in the affirmative, one in. Councilmember Johnson. Uh, permission to explain my vote. I want to congratulate the chair uh, on this budget. I know she's worked really hard, not just this year, but the last few years. We're going to miss her. Um, and uh, the last four budgets have been great progressive budgets. We've been able to do a lot of good things. So I want to thank her for her hard work and service chairing this committee, and I proudly vote aye. Final vote on all items of today's Committee on Finance have been adopted now by a vote of eight in the affirmative, one, excuse me, 11 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, with the exceptions of T numbers 6257 and 6258, which are now adopted by a vote of 10 in the affirmative, one 
zero in the negative and one abstention, and tax fixing resos, which are now adopted by a vote of nine in the affirmative, one in the negative, and one abstention. Well, thank you, and of course, I never want to leave this on a somber note. I'm only an Amtrak away, people. Um, come out and visit me, and I got to believe someone's going to hire me in Maryland. I got to believe. Um, but again, thank you for this really wonderful opportunity. I'll see everybody on the floor. Um, make sure that you take your packets with you. It's been a pleasure, and I'll see you at our next meeting. Thank you.